Hi, George here with another Photoshop Elements video project. And today we're going to be removing the background on this image, just like that. There we go. And to do this, I'll be using the Quick Select tool. Now, normally, when I remove a background with Photoshop Elements, I'll usually use the Lasso tool. And that's right over here, either the Polygonal Lasso tool or the regular Lasso tool, and then use the Refine Edge to clean things up. But some people don't like that particular method. They like something else, maybe more of a brush-like technique to do the selection. And you can do that easily here with the Quick Select tool. And that's right there, Quick Selection. So let's see how this is done. And I'll close this image down, get that out of the way. And we're starting off with this image right here. Just a nice picture of a girl holding her dog. Now I got this off of the Pixabay website. Let's take a look at that. We'll download this image. Just get this out of the way. And we'll switch over to Pixabay. Here we are on Pixabay, and I just did a search here for girl and dog. You can see it right down there. Here we go, girl and dog, and hit the enter key. There are quite a few really nice images in here. I almost used that one. I'll be using that for a later video for something else. I thought of a better use for that one. And then what I do is I'll just scroll through until I find an image that I like. There it is. And click on that image, and you can then download from this page. Now I have an account here, so it just speeds up the download just a little bit. The account is free. It just gets rid of that CAPTCHA screen thing that pops up. So I recommend going ahead and getting a free account. It just makes it a little bit easier to do your downloads. Now for this, we want to do the free download right here. And want this size 1920 by 1371. Click download. And then I downloaded this into my projects folder. It's right there. And let's now go back over to Photoshop Elements. And then in Photoshop Elements, go up to the file menu, Come down to Open, navigate to the folder where you saved your image, and choose your image, and then Open. And here we go. Now mine come in as floating windows. Doesn't matter in this video. So I'll just dock this right up here. There we are. Now the first thing I always do is to make a copy of the background. But in this case, what I'm going to be doing is to crop this image down to a square size, which is a size that's normally used on Instagram. But a nice square image I think looks better. It gets rid of this car problem down left-hand corner down there at least minimizes that. So a square image is good. So because I'm cropping this down, I want to first save this file as a different file name just in case. So that then becomes my backup. I'm not going to be damaging the original image. So I'll go up here to File, come down to Save As, and I'll save it right down here. I'm just going to rename this one Girl with Dog. And I'll save it as a Photoshop file. That's the Photoshop Elements file format right here, the PSD file format. It's going to be there anyway as soon as we begin working on this thing. So I might as well take care of that right now. Choose Save. And there we go. I now have that as a safety. So no matter what I do here, I can always go back to my downloaded image and try again if I make a mistake. OK, let's go ahead now and crop this down to a square image. So for that, go over here to the Crop tool. And on the Crop tool, just come down here and choose one of these square images. 5x5 five five is a square format. And there are some options you can see right down here, some different framings that are being suggested here. And this looks pretty good, the first suggestion. I'll just go with that one. Hit the green check mark, and that crops that down to the square image. Now the car is still here, but it's much better. So if I just wanted to use this, I think that really improves the image very quickly without doing anything else. So that's a real nice way by doing a crop down to an image. You can improve the image frequently without having to do anything else. In this case, though, we'll be changing the background so the car actually doesn't matter for us. Now, whenever I do that kind of a process, I always make a duplicate of the background layer just in case, again, just putting a safety in here. Right click where it says background, choose duplicate layer and choose OK. And this actually is even more important for this particular project because we're going to be changing that background layer to something else, which means I'll be losing that and that no longer becomes a safety. So my background copy now becomes my new background safety. So very important to do that. OK, let's go ahead now and make our selection, which of course is what this video is all about. And as I said before, I'll normally use one of my lasso selection tools for my selection. In this case, we'll be using this tool, the quick selection tool. It's right down here. You can adjust your size and your brush settings. Always use a hard edge brush on this one. And it's a pretty small brush size. You can kind of see the brush right there, pretty small. But that often helps. Now, the amount of area that's selected is much larger. What happens with this tool as you brush into an area like that, Photoshop Elements goes in and tries to find everything that's matching what you're brushing into. So the brush size really is not that important. But having a smaller brush size helps you to grab small details like the dog's nose right there. I was clicking that nose, and there we go. Okay, and then just brush around. Now, you can do this in several moves. 
I can do a move here and then a brush over here and then a brush over here. Notice as soon as I began doing a brush, it changed from the new selection down here to the add selection, which allows me to come in and add more content to my selection. Now, one thing about this tool, it's kind of hard to see here on the sleeve because of the patterning. It's not going to select anything that you really haven't been searching for. So you have to go through the middle section and make sure that you catch everything in the middle section and then all of that gets selected as well. So it's a good idea just to go through and just kind of clean up the middle area. You may want to do your outsides first, let it find the outside sections, and then come through and check, make sure that everything inside has been selected. Now at this point, this is all looking good, except that we have a space in here which was also selected and we don't want that. So this needs to be removed from our selection. So for that, come down here to this button. This is the subtract from selection button. And then do a little fast move in here and it grabs that whole section that's now been taken out. So we're now left with this area as our selection. Now, because there's a lot of fur in here on the edge of the dog, we're on the dog's fur, and some hair over here in the back of the girl's head, we need to refine that hair. Whenever you have hair or fur, you need to be refining that down to get a better selection for that. So that right down here, refine edge, there we are. And you can see there's that brush size again. That's the default 35 pixel brush size. That's not bad. And over here, I'm gonna set my smart radius at just one pixel. This helps on a little bit more difficult areas. I'm also gonna bring my contrast up halfway. That also helps the edge usually. I normally don't do anything else in here. I'll do a shift edge later if I need to, or feathering later on, or smoothing. I'll do those as separate steps. Instead of combining them into the one step, it gives me more flexibility that way. But in this case, I'm not even gonna need that. Okay, now you take your brush, and just brush right along that edge, and do it in sharp movements like this. And what this does is it tells Photoshop elements to go in and more carefully examine that edge and make the selection as tight as possible within that range that you're brushing into. So it looks for differences in color, looks for differences in contrast, things like that. And it tries to go in and really clean that edge up and make it as tight as possible. Now having the contrast set higher here, this tends to help. If you have some color or contrast problems that are not quite exact, this will help to clean that up a little bit. Now here we have some of the background showing through the hair. So I'm gonna brush from the outside in like that. You see how it goes pink? That lets me know that has now been added into the selection correctly. Now this is a hard edge, so it really doesn't need to have any additional work on that. I can just leave that as is. Now to check out all this went, go up here. I normally use the overlay mode. That's just kind of a red overlay and that usually works out well. On the shirt here, it's not as good as it could be. I just fixed one little spot right there because we have a red overlay and a red shirt. It may be a little confusing to see exactly what's going on here. So you can check that by either going to on black like this and that looks fine. Or you can do on white. Now notice with the white, we have a little bit of a color fringing around up in here. Now this is why I usually recommend if you are changing a background to change it to something that is similar. So we'll be going to a greenish background because this has a greenish tone around it already. And that works out well because there's also some greenish coloration in the rest of the picture here. So having a green background makes sense. It matches the color tones of the whole image. If I went in the opposite direction, something totally different like white, for instance, then we have this color problem right up along here. Now there is a way to fix that. And I will show you that first before we change the background in case you do that. But right now this looks pretty good. Put that back to my standard overlay, no real reason to switch back at this point. And then let's output this down to a new layer with layer mask. This does two things for us. It gives us a layer mask and it also leaves this layer as a safety layer. Choose okay. And there we go. Now if I hide the background layer, there's our image. Let's now take care of that kind of a greenishness around the edge here. Now to really see that well, I want to have a white background in here. So I'll come down right here to the background layer. Let's make a new layer right here. And I'll fill that layer with white. And we can now really see this edge. Now, one trick that I use that works out very well for this kind of a coloration problem is simply to change the coloration in here from green to something else. Now we have a white dog, which makes this easy. Let's go back up to that layer. There we go. Make sure you're on the right layer. Make sure that you see that light blue outline around the image side of the layer. If you don't click on that side to see that. And then go over here. This will either be the burn tool or possibly the dodge tool like that. Change that to the sponge tool, and let's change this to desaturate, 
And let me bring the brush size way down. There we go. And what desaturate does is it removes color. It converts color into a black and white. So since we have a white dog, that makes this real easy. All I have to do is just brush over this like that. And you see that? We still have the darker fringing, which is okay. But this gets rid of the green tone. And all of a sudden, it looks correct. It looks as if this is the right thing. We're not seeing kind of weird mossy coloration happening here on the dog's fur. So you can do this very easily. And then just defringe. Hold the space bar down. You can then move the image like that. And I'll go along the whole edge here, anywhere where I'm seeing that green tinge happening in here. And I'll just take out that green by converting that into a black and white. So a real easy trick to do, one that I tend to do a lot on these kind of images, is just to convert the edge over to a black and white edge. And you'd be surprised at how well this works, even on areas that have a lot of color, like right down here, kind of an orangish color in there. Even works out well there, taking out that green fringe effect. Okay, let's check over here. Get the section right in here taken care of. There we go. Now, if you really want to get rid of the dark edge in here, there's a way to do that. But let's just do a couple little things here first. There's a little bit right here in the nose on that layer mask. We don't want to get rid of that. Let's go to the layer mask side. And with a layer mask, black hides and white shows. So the black is hiding the background and the white is showing these images in here. So I want black as a coloration. I want a paintbrush. I want a real small brush size. Let's say a five pixel. And I'm just gonna paint black right on the layer mask. Let me set my opacity to 100%. There we go. And I'll just freehand this. And just come in here and paint right onto the layer mask right here. Just very carefully and take that out. There we go. Okay, let's go back to our desaturate tool and quickly finish up our green removal. Back to the image side, double click, there you are. And then quickly go around and take that out. Now notice how we're getting just a basic fringing in here. Okay, that's all done. You can see the white fur is going up. There's a bit of a dark edge around the white fur. That dark edge was actually in the image. You know, that value is actually in the image. But if you want to lessen that value, a couple of things you can do. One thing is on the layer mask side, you can try to increase the contrast in here. Sometimes that will bring that out. So for that same tool area, this is the burn tool. Bring the size down a bit. I have my exposure here set at 50%. Bring the size down pretty small. And then just come in and brush right along that. And it's going to harden up the edge on that layer mask. And sometimes that's all you need to minimize that fringing. You see how it's doing a pretty good job in here? Now this can take some time. It's, it's not a real fast process, but this can work out well. And you can come through here and minimize that. And the other way to get rid of this fringe is to lighten up that area. And that's using this tool here. This is the dodge tool. I'm gonna be dodging shadows over here on the actual image side. Just double click on that. I'll go up in here and I'll try this on the image side, see if this is any better for us. And there we go. So we're actually lightening up the image right along that edge using this tool and making that edge far less objectionable, I think you'd want to say here. So it's a little bit lighter and just toning down some of that darkness in here. And again, this is a technique which can take some time because I have a lot of stuff to do. This has to be done in just little short steps like this. If you go too fast, it's going to look fake and that can help to fix that area. Now in our case, because we are going to a background that's similar to the existing background, I'll use the control zero key here to go back to fit screen. This stuff is not gonna be showing up anyway. So those techniques up in here really are only needed if you are going to a massively different kind of background. If it's a similar background, you're gonna be just fine. Now to change our background, come down here, bottom right hand corner, click on the graphics button here. And up in here, here is the backgrounds section. By default, this will say by type over here, which is perfect. And then backgrounds is your top option. And then the one I found, I went through and tried a few of these until I found one that I actually liked. And this down here, quite a ways down, is this one right down here. That's a good background for this. It's called Dirty Sage, and that's okay. Now notice that some of these have a light blue triangle on that. This means that these have not been downloaded from Adobe yet. So if you want to get one that has a light blue triangle, make sure that you have current internet access for that. Then when you double click on this, it's going to download that first from Adobe, put it onto your computer, and then put it into your project. You then have it forever at that point. And the reason why Adobe does this is so that they don't 
fill up your computer with a whole bunch of background images that you never use, you never plan on using. So you only download the ones you're actually going to be using, and that saves space on your hard drive. Okay, let's go over here, click on this, puts it in as a background. Now in this case, we put that white layer in in front of our background there. So we'll go back to the layers, and I'll hide that white layer, and there we go. There's our new background. And as I said, because of the colorations, they're kind of similar to the colorations before. There's a lot of green in there. We don't see any issues at all around the edge of the dog here. So the look of the edge of your objects will depend greatly on your choice of a new background. Choose the right background and it's going to look perfect like it does right here. So here is the original background. This is a lot of green. This is almost exactly up here to our new background. There's a lot of greens in here and it's kind of dark-ish. So a background that has some green-ish tones and is darker is perfect for this. Hide that again, and there we go. There is that new background. And if you found this video useful, maybe you can send me a thanks for doing this and just click on that thanks button down there, bottom right-hand corner. That really helps out on my keeping my channel going here on YouTube and doing more of these videos for you. Also, check out my channel for hundreds more Photoshop Elements videos. I do videos all the time, so make sure you also subscribe. If you want to really learn how to use Photoshop Elements, then take a look at my complete training course, which covers everything in the program. And that works perfectly with my YouTube videos. It's a good team. And you'll find a link for that right down there in the description. And I'll see you next time.